evening, good evening. We are having fun with these people. I had a few boys from towing cars. They had one car towing another car right behind me. Mexicans, they come up here, buy them, and take them back to Mexico and sell them. It's a little business. But get behind them, it created a big backlog. And then we're able to clear it out a little bit, get past them. And we come across the semi truck. Just barely, hardly moving. And then we pass right where we got, well, turned on the film, or started filming. And I try to get these guys. But, like, every time I have a chance, they speed up. And then once they get in there and you don't have a chance, they slow down. It's the nature of the beast people sometimes out here. It's like they do it on purpose. Seems like it. I'm not sure if they do. It could be, but... It's 31 degrees out. Highway 6, eastbound, trying to get back to Junction. We got these hills, get up on top, get up here on top of the, the high valley, I call it, and then um, we head back down into Price, Utah, and then cruise along the 6 till we hit the 70, and it'll be an hour and a half from Junction. We have a trailer load of pallets. So it's enough to help keep it planted for wind. Um, somebody was holding up a lot of people. Put that out. Um, but light enough to climb hills pretty a good clip. It says let's see if I can look up the paperwork here. And I'm sure that they would know. More so than I do. I can guess. A little bit of math. It says that's 15,547 pounds. Uh, they consider a light, they would, uh, Wyoming would consider this a light trailer. Um, see how he's sold down. 20,000 pounds or less. And they close the highway to light, high-profile vehicles because of wind. Uh, this would be in that area. I would actually have to look at the wind conditions, see what the gusts are, and uh, the direction. One thing about Wyoming, really, their DOT site website is just phenomenal. Loads of information compared to Colorado. Colorado's absolute 
it's so hard to find anything. And it's bloated. It is absolutely bloated with all kinds of um, BS stuff. You know, you try to look up chain laws and it gives you instructions and it gives you a video about how to put chain laws on. And you're like, I'm trying to find where chains are required. And you can't find it. You used to be able to, but they, you know, as usual, destroy things. Government. Like Ronald Reagan said, the most nine most horrible words spoken are, I'm from the government and I'm here to help. Yeah. So it's 572 pieces. He wasn't moving, so I thought there was a chance. Okay, how many pallets did I say? I know he's going to come back over to 572. can't be right. It says, I did 572 times 100, because LBS, 100 pounds. It says 57,200, so obviously that's wrong. I think I'm doing my math wrong. I don't think the pallets weigh that much. I'll try 50. I'll try half price. Or I think 40 pounds. Let's try that. Clear. 572 times 40 equals 22,880 pounds. That's if they are 40 pounds a piece. Clear. Let's go 30 pounds. 572 times 30 equals 17,160. So are they saying that they're 25 or maybe 28? Let's see what they come up with. So they're going to know more than I do. I'm totally guesstimating here. I think that weight of five, fifteen thousand and change, basically fifteen and a half thousand, is probably correct. Let's see what five seven two times twenty five pounds equals. 
So it's more than that. That's 14,300. Twenty-eight is um, sixteen thousand. Why did you guys do this? That one coming up on me, or I'd be in the other lane. Man, I was doing good, then all of a sudden these cars just come around like, let's see, they come around in, in uh, groups. flying like they were freaking super truckers and then they get next to me hit a little bit of snow on the ground and they freak out Basically, they're saying 27 and a half pounds per pallet. I'm gonna have to get. It's just that's oh, they're all pine pallets as well. P I N E. Um, my son-in-law was working at Steel, a place, recycler and seller of new steel. He gave them some pallets that are hardwood, oak, and stuff. And I don't need those wiper blades anymore, really. Um, turn this down too, as well. We got 25 degrees. That helps. But some of that wood I wanted to save and use for like making projects with. And uh, this guy's going to mess me up right here. He, he's going to take the lane, keep me from going any further. Anyway. Um, yeah, just mill the wood. It's kind of rough cut. Just mill it. Let's run it through a planer, and voila, you have a nice piece of oak. And, and then there's 4 by 4s too, like 10 foot long, or 12 foot long. Are we already at the top? I think we are. The main thing is get, by, get past that minivan, especially one from Texas. We can clip the truck out here up on top on the uh, double lane, four lane highway. It'll be a little bit, but it's coming. So, we just got a tank of fuel. I don't think we can get past him in time. But I'm sure he's experienced looking at the way he's going. He's, he's going about as fast as he can for being weighted down. Adjust this a bit. But anyway, I'll try to get a pallet and then weigh it. Find out how much they weigh. I probably could just do a Google search, huh? <laughs> I'm glad the temperature dropped up here. Um, that helps. A lot. We'll just be stuck behind these guys for a little bit until we can get free of them.
So let's say they're if they're 30 pounds a piece. Fifteen hundred pounds. Well, sixteen hundred and fifty pounds more, roughly. So it's fourteen four. No, oh, I'm just thinking out loud. I need to quit doing that. Pay attention to the highway. See, here's the problem: is you get get behind people sometimes. Where does that say? Three? Yeah, three miles. And then you just have to do what they do. You have to drive like they choose to drive. Anyway, we got Balmy 24 now, so it's gone down a little bit. The road looks actually pretty decent, uh, traction-wise. Say so there's pretty good traction on it. I um, complimented a guy today. Truck stop. Um, He was having his trainee back um, so technically the, the parking spaces at the Sap Brothers in, in Salt Lake City are at an angle instead of being straight par par parallel they're angled so normally you would come up go in the direction of the angle of the dangle and then you back you know go left and then just back straight up in there well he had the guy come back the other way um, opposite of what the easiest way to do it and then jackknife that thing back around into almost like a V and I sat there and watched it and I'm like well heck yeah good on him um, teach if you're going to be a trainer teach them the hard stuff anyway he um, was walking by and uh, with a couple of black guys not that that matters or anything but um, I usually And it's probably because they're foreigners, but I've seen them um, just drive really bad in, in snow. And, and I assume it's just because they're not, they're obviously immigrants who come from another country and stuff. So I wasn't sure with these with this one guy, but regardless, it's irrelevant. Um, I, as he was walking by, I was getting out of my truck because I was going in to get breakfast. And... Uh, I go, hey man, I gotta compliment you on, uh, on your skills of giving that driver, your trainee, I, I, that's all assumption, um, something hard to do. I go, um, oh no, I go, I gotta compliment your style. I, I like your style, is what I told him. I go, that's pretty good, teaching your your driver, your trainee, how to do something that is harder and not give them the easy way out. And he's like, oh yeah, yeah, I, anytime we come in a situation like that, I can um, help them out, tell them, show them, we'll try it. And I'm like, well, that's, yeah, that's good. I'm, I like that, you know. And uh, kind of talk to each other as I walk into the restaurant there. I'm wondering why that's 
making so much noise over there. It's because my window was cracked. They, I got new wiper blades, but they gave me a summer and a winter blade, so I couldn't put the summer one on. Well, I could have, but wasn't going to. Because um, it would just lock up, freeze up, and give me the problems it is doing now. Let's see if I can get that to clear off by repetition. See that tanker, you can see he's gone. <laughs> and uh, I kind of assumed that he was seasoned, a seasoned driver. And he apparently is. Trying to get that blurriness off my windshield. I'll get back to Denver. I'll get. A, I'll switch the blade out. Or that blade was working good on this one. And I, I put the new one on my side. Um, and put the used one on that side over there. Which I probably should have done differently because it messes up your guys' view. I don't need to see, right? <laughs> 25 degrees. The tanker left everybody in the dust. I worry about this little black car in front of us. I mean, he's doing a good clip. I'm just worried that once I can't pass, he'll then go into a different mode of driving. Get past him, we should be all right. I'm going really easy on the throttle. I got the truck going and then I just kind of a little bit just to keep it going, but I'm, the traction is pretty decent out here, actually. So in case you're wondering why I'm driving like I am, it's because um, I'd be doing it different if it was different. I'll be going slower. I suppose I should have just stayed where I was at. So I, I told him too, I was like, hey, there's a, a um, I go, I teach people, I how to drive these in the snow on YouTube. He goes, really? I go, yeah. He goes, I like watching the, the truck channels because you get a lot of um, info from other drivers. I'm like, yeah, it's a pretty good deal, I think. I go, but all my winter driving videos, I throw pointers out here and there. And then I explain to him that you know, it's the colder it is, the better it is. And he's like, really? 
And he goes, so you know about snow? I go, yeah. He goes, what do you think of them socks? Instead of chains. And I go, well, I know. I've never used them personally, but I've heard good things about them, that they actually do work. He goes, yeah, they just don't seem like they can work. But I go, yeah, apparently they do. But, um, like I said, but I've, I've actually never tried them, so I can't give you a, a full review of them, but I've heard good things. You know, so yeah, I explained to him that, you know, the temperature when it's cold is better and stuff, and a few things here and there. I go, there's all kinds of variables, and I go, and, um, if you watch some of my videos, uh, don't freak out, because you probably will. <laughs> I go, I, I, a lot of people say I drive way too fast on the snow, um, and, I, and I do, I suppose. I know that, but I, um, if you notice my speed right now, you see how it changed? Um, it, it changes as the road changes, my driving changes, anyway. So I go, yeah, but I go, I, I've been driving for a lot of years, like since, I got my license at the end of 96. I've spent 20 years driving strictly up in the mountains year round and uh, I've learned a few things see like this car here was behind that truck and now the truck is leading and anyway I go yeah so I go a lot of factors determine the speed. I go, sometimes I'm doing a speed limit, sometimes I'm doing 20 mile an hour. It just all depends. So take that into consideration if you watch any of the videos. He goes, yeah, I've been, I've been driving for four years. I'm like, well, it seems like you, uh, I like your style. I like giving, that you're giving the, the guy a harder thing to do. Something that another driver would say, there's no way it can be done. <laughs> Type thing, you know, and you gave it to him to do that. He goes, yeah, I like to, I like to give, um, and try the hard stuff myself. And then, uh, since I'm training drivers now, I can give them harder things to do it just widens their their ability I go absolutely that's why I complimented you on your style I like your style temps has gone up No, if we're going to get um, snow all the way to junction, possible. Today is December 30th, 60 and we're doing 60. A little brakes right here.
that car seemed to have picked up a bit. This is nice. So yeah, I told that guy too, I go, I go, one of the most important things to do with snow driving is try to remain as calm as you can, which is really hard to do when you are faced with driving on the snow because it stresses, it'll stress you out. I go, but what you really want to do is try to remain relaxed and as calm as you can be. One thing, stress is bad for you, but it just makes it a lot harder overall. So a couple of my sister's daughters, my nieces, said that they wanted to do what I'm doing. Like get in a truck and travel the country. Get paid to do it. Where is a team? I told her, yeah, absolutely. Have her, have them do that, you know. And uh, if they're sisters, they can team. I called her yesterday when I was in Vegas, and uh, reminds me I need to tell her I'm not coming back. I thought I was going back to Henderson, Nevada, and no, it's Henderson, Colorado. I just didn't read all the way, but I told her I was coming back to Henderson. So now I need to call her back up and tell her that, yeah, no, I'm not going back there. Anyway, um, when I was talking to her, she goes, yeah, I had Angela. It was Angela or Gina, I don't remember which one. Watching the latest video you just posted. And uh, that was the one where I talked about getting in a stranger's vehicle because um, traffic was stopped. I didn't have any heat. It was on Highway 58 between Eugene and Chamolt whatever it is, up there off 97, north of Klamath Falls, Oregon. Anyway, um, <laughs> she freaked out. She's like, there's no way I can drive it on that stuff. There's, no I didn't really realize, I didn't even think about it, because they're from Nevada, and they've been there their whole life. But they would have to drive in the snow, you know? Well, it's not as bad as people think it is. Don't get me wrong, it is bad, but it's not as bad as you make it out to be. It's like anything, once you learn um, the boundaries, learn more about something, the more comfortable you are. You know, and, I mean, it's like flying an RC airplane. You cannot... Just, I don't even know what I was thinking. I had one of them trainers, and another driver that drove with us used to drive for quality. I got, went and got his own truck. Mike, anyway, he uh, I gave him the plane to fly, and he ended up crashing it right off the bat. I'm like, dude, I thought you had some kind of understanding of how things work. No, I'm clueless. I go, then you should have just said, no, I ain't doing that. I don't know what I'm doing. But, you know, you can't just grab it and start flying if you don't understand it. But if you do understand how, you know, the elevator does the pitch, nose up, nose down, ailerons, tilts the wings left and right, right and left. The rudder kicks the um, direction, flat wing left and right. It's pretty much all you need to know. Is that tanker getting right in front of me? Sure is. And I 
I should have should have kept on it a bit. I don't know if it's two lanes for a little bit or just one. Nope. Anyway, some people understand that. We should be able to um, be able to control it a little bit to learn how to fly. But with no concept of how it works, you know, you're definitely going to crash. And that's the only thing I see with people who are new to driving on snow or new drivers and then they encounter snow. I think the, uh, the thing that they do wrong, there's probably two. I, I don't think they're going to drive too fast. I think, I know they, they drive too slow. Believe it or not, it is possible to drive too slow in the snow. And if you're flat level ground, uh, you're okay then. You got hills and stuff, you're gonna spin out going too slow. Got, they got these new scales. You come down out of the mountains here and help her. Price is a little bit further. It's a little town of help her right here. Um, they built two new, Utah did, built two new DOT scales up here. Today being Friday, end of the year I'm gonna say they're closed let's find out once we get there that one that right before we came out of the mountains or came out of the canyon there was off to the right hand side that area there was a scale house and they were like always open for eastbound. I think they had the ability to tackle westbound as well, but rarely did they do that. East six, not lane. Be there. I remember one time they had, uh, well, it was just this last year, last summer, um, they have the week long blitz on commercial vehicles where Mexico, Canada, and the US uh, crack down on trucks. They do an uh, inspection blitz. I left Junction, got a green light. I was headed to Seattle and I was like, oh man, this is nice. I don't, because I'm going this route, I'll take 70 to 6, up to the 15, on into Boise, and up to the 82, and up to the 90, over Snoqualmie, drop on in. Um, I was like, I'm good. I, I'm not going to hit a scale until Utah on the 15 over by Ogden, north of Ogden, Utah. So I'm good to go because I knew they'd never pull you over westbound right there back in the canyon. So I'm like, I'm going to be 
be golden. And then I came around the corner there on uh, Thompson Springs. About mile marker 187, something like that. And I come around and I was like, oh, I forgot about the temporary one. I don't say portable, but they, they actually have a, a scale there. No building. Well, maybe there's a smaller one. I don't remember. And then the cops just show up and then do their inspections right there. Both sides of the highway. East and westbound. And I'm like, oh, shoot, I forgot about these guys. Not that I wasn't worried about it. I just don't want to be bothered with it. Just I want to keep rolling. Um, and so there was a truck in front of me and he was I don't know, pretty good far away from me um, maybe a quarter of a mile away distance between us and so he goes in and then as I'm coming in kind of, he's going out and I look and there's a sign off to the left says um, keep try, keep going unless directed to stop something to that effect I'm like okay nobody was directing stopping there's the port of entry coming up and uh, as I was getting closer one of the officers started walking at an angle towards where I was at. But well, the scale is open. I was wrong. Um, anyway, let's see if we get a green light. Oh, red light. Um, anyway, the truck behind me, which there wasn't any, he was going to get it next. It doesn't even look like they're open. I'm sure they are. I guess they are. That was the what I saw there, I thought, I wasn't looking at the further left there. Um, pulling everybody in. Yeah, I was completely wrong. I guess they, uh, like when it was in the canyon, they, they were always open. But the last few times I've been through here, they've been closed. I didn't scale out, but I, there's no need to. We're not heavy enough. Thirty-five eighty. I wonder how. Of course, that's a double tanker type. Three mile an hour. We're like right at three mile an hour. Twelve three eighty. Twenty one ten. Twenty four sixty. Is that a balanced truck or what? Okie dokie. Well, we'll end the video here. Um, keep on rolling through.
until we get junction. Let's see how much fuel we got. 31 gallons. It's 150 miles. Roughly. If I need to get fuel, I can get it in Green River. I prefer to get it in junction. Okay, with that being said, thanks again for riding shotgun with Mountain Man Mike. Till next time, enjoy.